Hello, Calculus 2 students. In this video, we will go over five series that are series with positive and negative terms. And in particular, we need to determine if each series converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. Fully justify our response. So what's my strategy on these types of series? Well, typically, and let's start with number one, we begin by looking at the absolute value of a n. In this case, this series is alternating and absolute value of a n is n squared divided by um, four plus n to the pi. Now ask yourself, are the terms going to zero? Well, you notice we have n squared in the numerator into the pi in the denominator, pi is bigger than two. And so without a doubt, the terms are going to zero. But also this strategy helps us figure out what we can compare to. So let's compare to this P series. N equals one to infinity of N squared divided by N to the pi. This is a sum N equals one to infinity of one over N raised to the pi minus two. And this is a P series where P is pi minus two. Now, Pi is bigger than three, 3.14 and so on. It's bigger than three. And so in particular, pi minus two is bigger than one. So this P series converges. Well, wonderful. We have zero less than or equal to absolute value of an less than or equal to this terms of this convergent P series. And so the comparison test is what I'm using here. Comparison test, it tells us that this series, n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of a n converges. But you notice this answers the question, what do I have here? I have absolute convergence. Maybe I'll do this in gray. You notice when a series converges absolutely, namely, I look at the absolute value of the terms, that series, and if I conclude that it converges, then I don't need an alternating series test here. I have finished this problem. Next question. Well, I start off with the same beginning. I want to look at the absolute value of AK. Here I have 1 divided by, let's see, this is K to the 1 third. And then I have minus 0 0.2 raised to the kth power. Um, once again, what's happening? Well, the terms are going to zero. This part um, in the denominator goes to zero. Oh, this part. So what dominates the denominator is this k to the one third growing without bound. What over that will go to zero. Now, we can also compare here. So. The question is, if you look at the sum absolute value of AK, does this converge or does this diverge? Well, this very much looks like this P series. K equals one to infinity of one over K to the one third. In this example, this is a divergent P series. So this is a P series. P equals one over three, less than or equal to one diverges. I want to use comparison again. So you notice the terms of my actual series, we have a smaller denominator. Smaller denominator means bigger fraction. And so it goes this way. We have zero less than or equal to one over k to the one third power, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of a k. Quote the test, comparison test. We get the sum k equals one to infinity of the absolute value of AK diverges. Term by term, the absolute value of AK is bigger than the terms of a divergent P series. But you notice I'm not finished because what I'm interested in is this alternating series. So, so far I have justified we do not have absolute convergence. And what do we do at this point? Well, we can jump in with an alternating series test. So let's take these terms, absolute value of AK, and let's go with an alternating series test. Well, we need two things. 
because we have an alternating series. We can use alternating series test. And we need the following to hold. We need absolute value of AK plus one is less than or equal to absolute value of AK. And this is the case. Um, the denominator is growing. And so one over that is, is decreasing. We also need a limit as K goes to infinity, absolute value of AK to be zero. And this also holds. So these two together, together with the fact that series itself is actually alternating, alternating series test, this says the series itself, this was minus one to the K over the cube root of K uh, minus 0 0.2 to the K converges. Now we have to make our conclusion here. We were asked, converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. And what do we have? We have this series where you take the absolute value of the terms and add them up. Diverges, the series itself, converges. And so we know what we have here. We have conditional convergence. This is our conclusion. Or number two. Number three, we have minus one to the n times cosine of pi over n. You might wonder if this is even alternating because cosine can be both positive and negative. Minus one to the n is, is certainly an alternating part. But you notice that um, cosine pi over n starting at n equals two. Well, cosine pi over two is zero, but then we have n equals three, n equals four, n equals five, et cetera. We are in quadrant one evaluating the cosine. And so cosine pi over n is always non-negative uh, four and bigger than or equal to two because we are in quadrant one. This is really a remark, but it's an interesting remark. This series is definitely alternating, and it's nice to think about. OK, well, now let's actually solve the problem. What do we notice here? The terms are not going to 0. As n grows without bound, cosine pi over n approaches cosine of 0, which is 1. So let's think about this here. You notice the limit as n goes to infinity of this part, which is the non-negative part, is one. We can bring the limit inside a continuous function, um, cosine pi over n, as I mentioned, goes to cosine of zero, which is one. Immediately, this tells us something about the terms of our actual series. If we take a limit as n goes to infinity of minus one to the n plus one times cosine pi over n, this limit does not exist. Because it's oscillating, what's happening is the cosine pi over n approaches 1. So if here's 1, here's minus 1. Now, minus 1 to the n, cosine pi over n will be like this. It will be bouncing back and forth close to plus or minus 1 for n very large. So this limit does not exist as a finite number. OK, the limit does not exist of the terms. This is term test. So by the term test, the sum n equals 2 to infinity of these terms, minus 1 to the n plus 1, cosine pi over n, diverges. When we can use the term test, if the terms are not going to 0, the alternating series diverges, and we're finished. Number 4. This is definitely alternating because of this minus two to the n part. Well, root test, root test, root test. We see something to the n. And root test can be used with a series of positive and negative terms. So this is fantastic. We take the nth root of the absolute value of a n. What happens here? Well, when I take the absolute value of these terms, the minus two just turns to a plus two. So let me write it like this. We will have a two to the n. In the denominator, I have an n to the four n. And then 
to the one over nth power. That this is the nth root of absolute value of a n. Now we can simplify this. 2 to the n raised to the 1 over n power is just 2. And then n to the 4n raised to the 1 over n power is n to the 4th power. This is wonderful because I can take a limit of 2 over n to the 4th as n goes to infinity. Let's do this now. We take a limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root absolute value of a n. This is a limit as n goes to infinity of 2 divided by n to the fourth power. This limit is 0. Denominator is growing without bound. This is less than 1. Quote the test. The root test, well, it tells us that the series, this alternating series, the conclusion of the root test is converges absolutely. So we have converges absolutely. It's very nice when we can use the root test or the ratio test on a series with positive and negative terms because the conclusion is either converges absolutely if the limit is less than one, or if the limit is bigger than one, we would have diverges. And you don't have to worry about the conditional convergence part. Really, that's the one you have to do the most work for with um, series with positive and negative terms. And in particular, we will see that with the next one. So number five, uh, this is the last one on this Section 5.4 problems. This one came off the final um, from spring 2022. Well, we begin, we look at the absolute value of AK. Definitely, this is an alternating series. And we get 1 divided by K plus the square root of K. You notice these terms are going to 0. And so the terms of my alternating series will go to 0. Well, what can I do here? If we think comparison, that's probably what I'm going to do. I will compare to the harmonic series. So let's look at this. k equals 1 to infinity. We have 1 over k. This is harmonic. And so diverges. You could also say p series with p equals 1 less than or equal to one diverges. But this is the harmonic series. Now, if you think comparison here, which that's what I'm about to do, the normal comparison test, direct comparison, we run into some issues because here we have a bigger denominator. This means smaller fraction. So the inequality goes the wrong way. But we can jump in with limit comparison. We take a limit as k goes to infinity. You take the kth term of one series which is like this. And then we divide by the kth term of the other series. Okay, if this limit is finite and positive, then the two series have the same behavior. So I have k, we have over k plus the square root of k. This limit we can see is one because here, k dominates the numerator, k denominates the denominator. This limit is 1, which is certainly positive. So what do we get here? Limit comparison test. Limit comparison. This says that this series, the sum, absolute value of a k, k equals 2 to infinity, this diverges. Limit comparison test says, well, it has the same behavior as the harmonic series. And so we get diverges. But you notice I'm not finished with this problem. What I know is if you take the absolute value of the terms, that series diverges. So this series here does not converge absolutely. So we need to jump in with an alternating series test. Let's copy this part. We will move to the next page. Absolute value of AK satisfies. Well, we need two things for alternating series test. We need it to be decreasing in terms to be decreasing in absolute value. And definitely that's the case. We have a fixed numerator and the denominator is growing. And also we need the limit of the absolute value of AK 
to be zero. K goes to infinity. And once again, definitely this is true. Fixed numerator, denominator is growing. So these two together, and make sure you write both of these two. There are two hypotheses in the alternating series test. Well, really three, if you add that. First of all, you have to be alternating. And then you need the terms to be decreasing in absolute value. And then you need the limit of the terms in absolute value to be zero. And make sure all of those hold. Okay, well, alternating series test. This says the sum k equals two to infinity minus one to the k divided by um, this part, k plus the square root of k. Alternating series test says that this converges, but now we can make our conclusion. So we have justified the series itself converges. We have justified the absolute value of the terms that series diverges. And so our final answer here is conditional convergence. Conditional convergence. This is the end of this problem. We had two that converge conditionally. And as you saw, those took the most work. Okay, so here are these five problems from section 5.4. I hope these were helpful for you. Thank you so much, students.